Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. Who is this Tom guy? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk book. We're the radio talk show today. Not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The letter appeared in Ask Amy, syndicated advice column in the Chicago Tribune that appears in newspapers across the country, including the Los Angeles Times. And the letter from Thoughtful in Ontario said, Dear Amy, my fiancé and I are contemplating marriage. We love each other very much, trust each other completely, and want to start a family. We're both 27 years old and have built lives we're proud of. We found ourselves in the position of questioning what marriage means to us. Neither of us is particularly religious. We value the fact that marriage signifies a lifelong commitment. But as we also believe it's better to divorce than remain in an unhappy marriage, this benefit to marriage also seems somewhat invalidated. We don't want to engage in a meaningless wedding just so we can throw a big party. Do you have any thoughts for us on what marriage can mean for a couple or for a family above and beyond religious teachings? Or do you think we're just thinking about this too much? And Amy, rather than giving a complete answer, simply threw it to her readers. And I say, who has time to wait for what the readers think? Waiting for the snail mail to come out of the Chicago Tribune's offices. So I just decided to take calls from you, talk about it with you directly. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Stacy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you this evening? Hey, Stacy. I'm good. Good. Well, I was listening um, to the last couple callers and... um you know, I'm kind of also a victim of the Brady Bunch era where, you know, you're, it's marriage and kids and, and, you know, so a lot of ways I really do agree with you, even though I just kind of am a fairly listener. But, um, the only thing is, is I think if you're going to have kids and I, when you talk about like, you know, get as much sex as you can from whoever and, you know, I, I can understand that. But then when you're having kids, I don't know. I just think it would be a hard example. You know, for kids. Again, I, I'm not saying there isn't a benefit to kids. There isn't a benefit to men. At all. You don't see a benefit to men at all? No. <laughs> well, because I, I know I've, I've had a couple marriages under my belt, but, you know, I never I listen to some of the guys that call in, and, you know, I've never, ever taken a guy for... When we split up for That's wonderful that, that you didn't, but most do. That's why there's divorce courts. That's why there's divorce attorneys. That's why you read about huge divorce settlements. Right, and right. Somebody's getting them. It's just not you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's so even if you're not doing it, it doesn't mean everybody else isn't. Well, and I, you know, and I do think that's like that last car said, um, I've heard, I have a, a girlfriend who, um, her boyfriend has girlfriends and he keeps telling her he wants to marry her and she just kind of doesn't see what's going on. So, and in some ways too, if he was more honest, I was wondering why he doesn't just tell her, you know, I like you, I want to continue seeing you, but I also want to see other people. Why wouldn't someone just come out and do that? Because many women don't want to appear to be sluts and they will mm -hmm. say no to that, even though they may be dating other people themselves. Well, isn't there enough women out that he could just move on to the next we one? We have now learned that that statistic we found about online dating. Mm -hmm. We have now as men, we have learned that when women say, oh, no, I never do this. Oh, no, I'm not a slut. Oh, no. What do you take me for? What do you think I am? It's all a lie because one third of the women who have pictures of sunsets and puppy dogs and kitty cats on Match.com and mm -hmm. other online websites, they have sex on the first date. 
right, so it kind of doesn't um, make sense. But. All it is is women tell this lie that we men believe. Well, I mean, do you think there are some really successful marriages that some people really are meant to be married? Or like I have said that? many times, a couple of months ago, a man fell out a 16-story window, and he lived. Do you think there are people who fall out of 16-story windows and live? Yes. Right. Do, you think, do, you, think, do you think everybody should jump out a 16-story window to find out? No, obviously no, not. Of course not. Well, okay, I just kind of want to express my opinion. Okay. Thank you well, very much. I love that cadence when women call radio programs like it's not okay for them to give an opinion. I just wanted to say what I was thinking. If that's okay with you. You know, I just wanted to express my little opinion here. On your big, big time radio show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Robin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, how you doing? Great. Um, I'm in complete agreement with you. I was married for five years to a guy who worked maybe two out of those five. And I've been working two jobs for about ten years to not only supplement his income, but mine. Uh, he put me in debt over $20,000. And for me working two jobs, that was quite a bit supporting two people. Of course, had you had a prenup, that would have been impossible. But you would never do that, right? No, actually, I, I'll send a prenup. I, I, yeah, but why I didn't you instigate the prenup? Well, it was one of those um, situations where I thought... like I was in love! No, 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 that marriage is forever and that when, you know, you're right. with someone, you're not supposed Even to Even though them. half of all marriages end up in divorce. Right. And, uh, oh, I agree. And the other thing, too, was the fact that um, even when we moved in together, I didn't want to marry him. I never said yes to him. So why'd you do it? Um, my parents started paying for things. <laughs> and... Uh, I really respect my parents, and it was very hard for me to tell them, like, what are you doing? So they were trying to give you financial incentives to get married. I I believe so, yeah. When in reality, if they were giving you things, getting married would mean that he would own half of them. Well, that was the thing that actually made my divorce okay, is the fact that I told him to take his things and go, and I'm keeping my things I, I didn't want anything else from him. I still don't want anything else from him. It was pretty amicable divorce. I just said, take your stuff and go, you know. And now I'm, are you going to get done. married again? No. I actually have a boyfriend who's currently listening to the show. And um, I'm a first-time caller, first-time listener. And he even told me, he goes, you don't think like a girl. And I started laughing. I said, why, who do I think like? And he told me, I think like you. So I thought that was funny. I love that. Yeah, well, apparently we agree on quite a few things. And since I've been listening to your show, I find myself yelling at the stupid men who call and are in <laughs> stupid situations. We have so, a lot of them, dear. That's how we make our living. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, the women who are too ignorant to realize that, you know, not everything is roses and sunshine and rainbows. So I, I'm in complete agreement with you. You know, it's funny because I, before I even listened to your show, my boyfriend would, you know, mutter a few things here and there. And I'd just be like, where do you get these thoughts and ideas from? And then he told me you. And I'm like, okay, I got to listen to this guy. So about a week ago or so, I started listening to you. And I'm I'm finding myself, like I said, yelling at the radio going, you stupid man. And especially the one that got married six times. Um, you know, and, and why are you... I I made my mistakes. I admit it. You know, my mistake was getting married when I did not want to, and and I understand this. Um, and I, of course, tried everything for about a year or so to make things work. I asked him for counseling. I asked him if, you know, um, we could talk every Sunday to try and reconcile things. And it came down to a point where I had gotten to a car accident, and he didn't care that I survived. Oh, boy. I, I was done. I After that, 
I, that's a whole other topic, by the way. People who've been with somebody and they are so fed up with the relationship, something horrible happened to the other person, and you're kind of hoping they wouldn't come home. Or you're like, uh, yeah, well, whatever. All right, sure, raped, okay, whatever. <laughs> uh-huh, concussion, fine. <laughs> Stabbed. Did she make it through? Uh, all right, <laughs> whatever. 1-800-5800. It's so offensive, I can't believe he said that. That's disgusting. Melissa, on the Tom Likas show, hello. All right, she's going to listen to the radio. Wait. Hi. No. Oh, hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Great, thank you. Hey, I just wanted to call and tell you that I completely agree with your philosophy on the institution of marriage. Yes. And I'm hoping that maybe you will actually consider me to be the one woman that you talked to tonight that actually has some semblance of intelligence. I, I hope don't know. There's other... I'm sorry? A couple of intelligent women have called in. Oh, good, good. Sorry, I had to take a break. Dean, from Dean wasn't paying that. attention when he was screening. That's how that happened. <laughs> well, hey, no, my parents have been married for 40 years. And uh, they're happily married grew up great home environment all that good stuff but you know for me i'm 33 years old i'm single financially independent and uh you know i don't need a man to take care of me i want to take care of myself i get what i need for myself now are and, you uh, here's the real question here's the sixty four thousand dollar question are you attractive yes and i don't mean inside i mean outside like if someone looked at you they'd say look at her Hot. Absolutely. Tom, I'm five foot ten flat footed and I used to model. So yes, I'm attractive. Wow. Yeah. So I mean I'm I'm the whole package. But you know, what I'm looking for if you know I choose to have a companion, it's because of that person and not because of what they're going to do for me or buy for me or anything like that. So you're you know? simply looking to get boned if you need to. Exactly. Hey, you know, I know how to throw a little leg. I'm down with that. I can do really? that. You just need to throw a little leg up. <laughs> I've been known to throw them both every once in a while, too, Tom. Love Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Remember, left leg of the 10, right leg of the 2. <laughs> no, but I you know, I think I'm one of the few women that actually 99.9% .9 of the time I agree with everything that you have to say. And uh, it's nice to actually listen to your show because even though I am a woman, you know, I still feel like sometimes there's those guys that you know they're looking for they're looking for the, the the mother figure somebody to take care of them and things like that. No, not even interested. All right, you're... Melissa, well, that sounds good to me. Tom, Tom, Tom. Nipples. Tom Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. <laughs> you're unbelievable. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likers show. Oh, look at that. Mr. Whipple died. He was not in my uh, Deadpool, Mr. Whipple. Besides, he was 91 years old. I just want to say this about Mr. Whipple, the character that did the commercials for Charmin toilet paper. And I mean this. I'm not just saying this to this day. I hated that commercial so much. I will never, ever, ever buy that product, ever. You know, nothing wrong with being a fruity store manager, but when I saw that character on TV telling the little old fag hags who shopped at that supermarket, please don't squeeze the Sherman, I mean, nothing drove me away faster from a product than that character. Now, I know it was phenomenally successful, and then it made Sherman the number one bathroom tissue in America. Because, let's face it, you know, this country is full of uh, women who, uh, you know, are very moved by gay men, whether it's guys doing uh, home makeovers or guys... Uh, you know, uh, hairdressers, uh, performers. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Singers who look gay, singers who are gay. You know what I'm talking about. 
So, of course, they ran out and bought Charmin just because, you know, women love gay men. And the actor who played uh, Mr. Whipple, I don't know what his sexual orientation was. Now that he's dead, we could speculate. I mean, he did have a daughter, it says here in the story, but lots of gay men have kids. Jesus. Just that whole concept. I always find it really weird that the most conservative, by the way, I'm a disciple of Procter & Gamble and specifically their ability in the marketing area. And if you have any interest in how my head works and you, I always recommend books to you that I know you'll never read, but at least I give you kind of a bibliography of my life so you get an idea of some of the influences I've had. And... um Trout and Reese are the names of the two marketing guys who were behind Procter & Gamble for many, many years, and they've written a number of books. I have some of them on my shelves, in fact, at home. And um, Procter & Gamble is second to none in their ability to market products. They are absolutely the best that there ever have been and ever will be. And I don't say this because they advertise on our show, because God knows we don't have the audience they're looking to reach, Okay. They're looking to reach women. But, uh, you know, it was quite, I think, amazing that Procter & Gamble, way back in the 60s or whenever those commercials started, thought of this idea of having a character who was like a fruity, fuss-budgety store manager who didn't want women squeezing toilet paper and who then had some kind of autoerotic asphyxiation of toilet paper. I always imagine Mr. Whipple taking those rolls home at night and... You know, squeezing them. <laughs> Pulling the boxers down and finding a place to store his toilet paper. You know what I mean? I swear, as a kid, when I first started having those kinds of thoughts, that I, I'm not making this up. That was one of my first thoughts about Charmin when I was a kid. I, I Frankly, when, when the Charmin commercials first came on, I knew there were gay people. I just didn't know, like on TV, you know, you had all these characters that, that looked remotely gay, like any character played by Paul Lind or whatever. And, and of course, there was Mr. Whipple. And I imagine Mr. Whipple's character taking the roll of toilet paper home and just uh, dispensing it from his midsection. That's the cleanest way I could say it. Squeezing the Charmin. Actually, if you think about it, it's a lot more convenient than taking a sweat sock to bed. I can't help myself. <laughs> I'm, now, how's that for a mental image you're going to have tonight, Mr. Whipple? I wonder if he had the role going over or under. <laughs> if he was in your Deadpool, you got nine points, but I doubt you did. <laughs> By the way, uh, you know where he's being buried. Did you hear about this? <laughs> he and three other family members are going to be uh, wrapped in cellophane. They're going to be placed together. And please don't squeeze them. I hated that guy. I hated him. I'm sure in his private life he was a very nice guy. Just an actor trying to make a living and stuff, but, you know, as a kid, and that commercial was on, and I remember, you know what, I remember having summer vacation and being exposed to daytime television for the 12 weeks of summer vacation. I remember Mr. Whipple was on, like, in every break on every daytime TV show, and it, I hated him. I absolutely hated him. You know, and the guy was more flaming every commercial that came on. Not that there's anything wrong with being flaming. I wonder how many gay men out there came out of the closet because they were emboldened by seeing Mr. Whipple on television. You know, it's like the black people who uh, wanted to become uh, astronauts because they saw Uhuru on uh, Star Trek. How many gay men came out because Mr. Whipple was openly in the supermarket squeezing toilet paper? I'll bet there are gay men out there right now who had erotic dreams about being with Mr. Whipple. Can't help it. Is he a bear? I don't know if he was a bear. 
I think he'd be more interested in guys wrapped in paper. I'd like to squeeze them. Oh, yes. He liked guys who were squeezably soft. Sorry, I can't help it. I'm off to the races here. I can't stop. Somebody stop me. 1-800-5800-TOM. What were you going to say, Gary? I'm sorry. Were you going to try to stop me again? No, you were going to try to push me further, weren't you? <laughs> this is Anna on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Oh, my goodness. I was just telling your person that answered the phone that you ought to thank God that there's women in this world or you would not have a job and you would not have anybody to talk about. Or, or by the way, oh, I might add, I have to agree with you. Day. And there wouldn't be <laughs> there wouldn't be any sperm depositories or human yeah. toilets. You're absolutely yeah. right. And thank God for women. We have dildos and we don't have to deal with men like you. Well, uh, you know, it must be tough being a lesbian. Sometimes they're just no good. You gotta All right, it. darling, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. I'll bet she was no fan of Mr. Whipple either. For different reasons. She's off having a Coors Light with Rosie O'Donnell now. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Sarah, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom. Hi Sarah. I, <laughs> I can't believe what she just said. That's hilarious. Um, I just... we had to believe it. That's how good it was. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that. This whole discussion is the perfect reason why women should get their own freaking education. You know, I'm engaged, and we're not getting married until I get my degree. And if we if we divorce, then I walk away with my degree, and I can take care of myself. I don't need him. What about a prenup, dear? Neither one of us have anything. Yeah, but you with that you're assuming you'll never have anything. This is true. This is true. And, and I mean, you know, why would you get a degree if your plan is to be completely unsuccessful in anything you ever attempt to accomplish? Just because I don't want a prenup? I mean, Would I don't you, have any any feeling about a prenup one way or the other. Yeah, but why don't you why don't you have a plan to get one? We're not that far along actually. We we're, we're going to get married in about a year and a half. So right, but, but you're I, engaged. Yes, we are. So engaged. now it's time to get the prenup. Uh, that doesn't mean get it in a year and a half, the week before the wedding. That means you get it now. You know why? What happens if you have big disagreements about the stuff in the prenup? Maybe you won't be getting married. This is true. And it's better to find out beforehand than after. So it's time to make the appointment and go down and get that done. Yeah. You know, and I also wanted to tell you that I really, truly, even though I'm getting married and, and we're getting married, I really agree with you that there are men and women who are not meant to be married. And they should just realize it. I mean, that guy who, who waited six marriages, really? It took well, I, see, marriages? I think no man no man is made to be married. Uh, women, of course, get benefits from being married and, uh, you know. You know, and, 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 and we could disagree on that. I mean, I don't speak for all women, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I love your show and I love you, but you don't speak for all men. And I'm sure if you throw a rock, sometime you're going to hit a guy who, who is meant to be married, and that's fine. I don't think men benefit from marriage. You're here. I'll tell you who benefits from marriage. What men benefit from marriage? Hmm. Kevin Federla. <laughs> <laughs> he did benefit from marriage. Absolutely. Yeah, but how many Kevin Federlines are there? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. And who would marry him if, if you did? The reason him? the Kevin Federline divorce for Britney Spears is a story is because how often do you ever hear of a man getting money from a woman? It, it just doesn't happen. True, and that's the problem. That's the problem right there is that here's the problem, Tom. Okay, you if women thought they would have to pay alimony, they would not be bothering us all the time to get married. <laughs> well, exactly. It should be both ways. It should be both ways. And, and that's the thing. If you're a successful guy and you go marry a waitress, what are you going to expect? What are you going to expect when you get a divorce? She's going to just go back to waitressing? I mean, that's the thing. By the way, the answer to that, yes. <laughs> but it doesn't work that way. And that's Why, but thing. it should work that way. Guess what? If you were too lazy to go to college and get a degree, and I meet you and you're a waitress, and things between me and you don't work out, yes, you should be going back to being a waitress, and I should owe you 10 cents. Exactly. Well, see, that's the thing, is that 
for me personally, I'm not getting married until I can take care of myself. But this is the thing, Tom. There are stupid women and there are stupid men. If a man goes out and marries some chick who cannot take care of herself before he marries her, is he? I don't think he has the right to expect that she's going to take care, go back to not being able to take care of herself after he after he gets done with it. I think he should expect that. Hey, she's going to try and screw him, and you know, it's not right. It's not something that I would do. Like I said, I can walk away from this marriage with my head held high, and as long as there aren't any kids, I don't need anything from them. I don't. And. You know. Yep, but the problem is the law allows you to take it whether or not you actually need it. And that's the problem that I have. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Were you a virgin? No, man. I, I, I've been with like, hundreds a lot of, of women in my Hundreds and hundreds. Mother's best friend, grandmother's best friend, girlfriend, mothers. He's been with every woman on earth. Everybody. Look at the white faces. Everybody with a female name, he's been with them. I wow. wouldn't say every woman, but I mean, any woman that will let me. That's my problem. Any woman that's a that much smaller list. I think that's the biggest case of virginitis I've ever heard of. It's the Tom Likey Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1 800 5 800 Tom. This all started with a newspaper article. A couple writing into the Ask Amy column of the Chicago Tribune. We're considering getting married, but they're not particularly religious. They believe marriage is for life, but they also believe that if a marriage is bad, you get divorced. And they say, why do this? Good question. Why do this? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you, sir? Great. Well, I just had a, a question for you. I'm, I've only been a short-time listener. I've only been listening for a few months. And you've probably covered it in other shows. Uh, my question is, um, did you start talking about uh, marriage and, and its, you know, turmoils and downfalls after your fourth divorce, or were you talking about it prior to then? Well, I have talked about it over the years, but I've become more strident and more specific about my objections to marriage after uh, all of the divorces were complete, of course, because I continued to get married. I see, I see. And uh, by, by no means was I trying to be derogatory. I, I think you're wonderful, but I just, I, I'm like I said, I'm sure you had covered that point before, and I just uh, wanted to know, you know, what what was up with it. Yeah, I mean, I've learned. I, I'm one person who will tell you I've made mistakes, and I've learned from. Yes, sir. I think, uh, I think that's a valuable lesson that uh, all men should take is, uh, you know, like I say, I, I greatly enjoy listening to your show. I, I work in Dallas and commute back and forth between my the town I live in. It's about 80 miles away, so I get a lot of chances to listen to you. But uh, anyway, I think you're great, Tom. David, thank you very much for that. I appreciate the call. We have one of these unique situations where everybody hung up at the same time. Everybody hung up at the same time. So uh, this is one of those times where if you dial right now, and these come up about once every month, or once every six weeks, if you dial right now, you're guaranteed to get on if you get in before I finish this sentence. Yeah. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. You might still get through, but the guarantee is open. The guarantee is open. 1-800-5800-866 is our telephone number. Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Daddy. Hello, son. How you doing this evening? Great. Fantastic. Tom, a long-time listener, second-time caller. As always, before I uh, tell you why I'm calling, I want to thank you once again for being the true voice of reason to all men out there. You are truly the professor, and I thank you for the wonderful service that you are providing. Thank you for noticing that. My pleasure, sir. I wanted to comment about this uh, Ask Amy article you were talking about, uh, you know, the, um, the pitfalls of marriage and everything. I read an article in a local newspaper here in South Florida, 
and they basically summed up this whole concept of marriage in two words notarized dating that's all it pretty much is when you take a look at the amount of marriages that are failing in this country today according to some statistics especially here in florida 57 percent of all marriages that take place in this state nowadays will at some point end in divorce and in cases where at least one of the two entering the marriage has been previously divorced the divorce rate is even higher and the primary reason is because of past issues from previous marriages temptation that's out there i'm not knocking marriage but there's absolutely no advantage to it especially for men when you look at everything that's going on with uh, no fault divorce the freedom of no fault unfortunately women can you know take advantage of the system and they can take the men to the cleaners and i agree totally with you one thousand percent about this concept and we allow this to go on I know, and, and, and it's unfortunate. And the one thing that I say, especially to all the men out there, you need to listen to Tom Likas. You need to listen to the professor. He knows what he's talking about. And men, and I, I'm telling you, Tom, if I, I, I've been divorced now for almost seven years, and unfortunately I wish that you were around. Well, you probably were, but unfortunately I was listening to you about seven years ago. But men, I say this to you. Whether you are rich, whether you are poor, if you decide to get married, Please, please, please get a prenup. You'll thank Tom later. I'm sure that you I agree with I agree with you one thousand percent. Get that prenup because if men, if you end up getting divorced, the woman has every right to take you for everything that you have. And she will. Exactly. Tom, as always, it is a pleasure. Please take me out African tribal style, please. Here you go, Kevin. Baninge, 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 so It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Greg on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm okay. Uh, Long-time listener, and I'm one of the uh, happily married men of America, but uh, I'm sure you want to grill me on it a little bit. Why do I need to grill you? Only you know if you're happy. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I mean, I think you're doing a great service to the boys out there, <laughs> and... Um, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend it unless you really, you know, you want to work at the marriage. I'll tell you the other thing I want to call about. My wife is smoking, and I mean smoking hot. I would not marry a woman that uh, doesn't have the, you know, necessary qualities. I make, you know, a lot of money. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And I think that, uh, you know, for some... It's a really good thing. I think that, uh, you know, I, I, I talk to my son the way that you talk to your boys about, about protection, about not letting a woman trap you. And, you know, I, just, uh, I, guess, I guess I just got lucky. Wow. Well, uh, you know, again, it is luck because the vast majority of guys are not getting what you're getting. Correct. And, uh, you know, I mean, I... I get it about once a week. I'm sure I can say that on the radio, which may or may not be enough. But once you know, a week, what I are know. you seventy? <laughs> well, there you go. Now you got me on a. Now you got me on a drawback. No you wonder know. you're so happy. <laughs> once a week. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this: it's it's quality, not quantity. No, stop it. You know what? You need. At least three quality swings a week. You can't be doing it once a week. That's ridiculous. Well, my wife and I have a have a little deal. And if she's not interested, she helps me out. So, uh, you know, I, I could get it more than once a week. But I, I, I like, uh, you know, I like the way. No, you, the right deal now. should be if, if she doesn't want it, she helps you get laid by somebody else. <laughs> she helps you find tried. somebody on the side. I've never tried that. Now, you know what? Um, I'm not perfect. I have made mistakes, and I and I would not. Uh, I I really appreciate the fact that you tell your listeners that hey, when when you're married, you shouldn't be screwing around. And uh, you know, I I don't. I made my mistake, and and I certainly don't anymore. And um, you know, I think that that if you're going to be in marriage, you do it right. 
I have to tell you that this is my point, and I've talked to my buddies about it. <clears throat> I listen to your show all the time, and I do almost exactly the opposite to stay married. Well, because I don't give advice on how to stay married. I give advice on how to get laid. Right, and and clearly, I, you're not following it because you're not getting laid. Well, I am. I mean, I, you know, like I said, Once a I, week I, I is get... not getting laid. Once a week is a mercy hump. Yeah, but I get I get helped out in many other ways. Uh, guess I what? I, there's only one kind of help I need, and it involves, uh, it's kind of like churning butter. You know what I'm talking about? It involves some um, it risk involves, activity. Correct. It involves a vagina, but there are other ways that uh, I can be satisfied. And, and like I said, unless you're making, I, I, I appreciate the fact that you tell your listeners, go to college. You know, I have a, I have a, I have a doctor degree. And, you know, I make a lot of money. I do I do very, very well. You pick a woman. That By the way, making me. all that money, you know how much you could be getting laid out here in the real world? Uh, yeah, I, I live in Malibu, man. I live in L.A., so I know exactly how much I can get. So but look what wife, you're giving up here. You only have one my life. Wife is, my wife is smoking hot. I mean, I, I got to tell you, she says. But what good is it if she is not performing her duties? Well, you know, I think that uh, she's doing the best she can, and and I, I got. What do you mean she's you, doing I'm, the best she can? I'm satisfied. I don't necessarily oh need. My, to, oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! You're killing me. I can't take anymore. Stop, please. <laughs> Shelly, yes, I haven't said your name yet. Shelly, you're yes. on the. Now we're gonna run. Through, follow the script with me, dear. Okay. Yes. Let's start again. I like to go out with. Wait! Tom. Wait! I haven't started again. Hold on. I'm preparing. You're preparing? What are we having here, an orgy? Not you, dear. Shelly, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. My name is Michelle, not Shelly. It's Michelle. Well, it says Shelly on the screen. Did you change your name between the time uh, you called in? That's a nickname, but my name is Michelle. Well, you told Dean your name was Shelly, and that's well, the name I'm going by. Well, for Tom, it's Michelle. Are you nuts? I, I would think so. <laughs> yeah. So why are you calling? I want to talk to Tom. Oh, hold on. I'll get him for you. The Tom Like is show at 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Shelly on the Tom Likas Show. Michelle, Tom, hi. How are you? Oh no, I was I I I, I was talking to Shelly, so uh, you'll have to hold on a second, okay? Oh, Shelly is my nickname. For you, it's Michelle. Are you insane? <laughs> I probably, most likely, I would assume. <laughs> Why are you calling, dear? Why am I calling? Is this Tom? Oh, you wanted to talk to Tom. Um, well, who do you think I want to talk to? Long time <laughs> listener, first time caller. <laughs> no, I called you before. Long time I, listener, second time caller. I called you about a year ago. Is this Tom Likas? Oh, you want to talk to Tom Likas? Hold on, please. <laughs> Tom Likas show at 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Shelly, the Tom Likas show. Hello. I can't yeah. hear you. Can you hear me, Tom? Is this Tom? You know, I did two years on the air in Miami, Florida. Gary, you weren't there with me. This is what it was like night after night after night. What was that? This, by the way, is the daughter of the woman who used to call me. This is the daughter? When I was in Miami. No, 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 no. Everybody no. in the card room loves your show. I told my daughter to listen to you. She's 74. The Tom Likas Show.